You may remember, if you think back about two chapters, King Benjamin has called all his people together to the temple. And he's brought them there because he's going to announce that his son, Mosiah, will become the new king. So while he's there, he has them gather in families in their tents, facing towards him on this tall tower. You can kind of picture this scene, mm -hmm. right? And he gives them an accounting of his life and his reign as king. And he tells them, I have been humble, I have been a just, and I have been a good king. And I can answer with a clear conscience before God today. And then he asks them to consider their lives, right? He says, I want you to put yourself at the end of your life, when you meet your creator, as I'm going to meet my creator soon, what's that gonna be like? So he brings them to this very emotional place at the ends of chapter two, and then again at the end of chapter three. And sandwiched between those, he gives them this beautiful account of the life of Jesus Christ. He says, an angel came to me and gave me this amazing news. We have a savior, the Lord God omnipotent, who will come down and will save his people. And he teaches them about the atonement. So that's the setup. That has taken us to this point in the sermon. And it kind of feels like he's about to wrap up, right? But something happens. The people have responded to him. He senses their response. So in the next several chapters, this sermon is going to continue based on a kind of back and forth rhythm between the people and the king. He sees their response. He responds to them. Then they respond to him and he comes back and teaches them again. So in chapters four and five, we see this beautiful teaching moment unfold between the king and his people. <laughs>